I hope you can go out and feel confident about getting your bagpipes oiled and maintained so that they can last you your whole life and maybe even some uh, lifetimes after that. Hello, my name is Matt Willis, and in this web series, I give tips and strategies on how to make you a stronger and more confident bagpiper. All right, this episode of Command Your Bagpipe is about oiling your bagpipe, and I am a big fan. I've been oiling my pipes for over 20 years, all the various sets I've had, and uh, I have not had any cracks, problems, or other issues. Now, that being said, I want to start with a word of warning. If you've never oiled your pipes, you have an heirloom set of pipes, do this at your own caution. I'll give a few tips about how you might want to go about doing that if you have an older set. Stay tuned toward the end of the video for that. Let's talk about the products you need to oil your pipes. I'm a big fan of making sure that I put a plant-based oil into the wood of my pipes. I don't want to be using some sort of clear mineral oil petroleum product on the pipes. I don't want to be introducing mineral oil into the wood. This was a living, breathing thing at one point. We want to replace the oil with something similar. The most readily available oil is sweet almond oil. My preferred is actually the Hobe, I believe that's how it's said, sweet almond oil. You can get this on Amazon for just a few dollars. You can get it at uh, vitamin shops, uh, Sprouts, a lot of different uh, health food retailers will have this. It's a skincare product, but it's sweet almond oil with just enough vitamin E in it to keep it from going bad. You don't want your oil going rancid. If you get almond oil from the store and it doesn't have any vitamin E in it, it might start going bad on you. You might want to either add a little bit of vitamin E. I'm not sure how much. I just buy the stuff that already has it. It works great. This is less expensive, but works. The product I use is actually from Boar Doctor. And there's a lot of write-ups on the internet about why you might want to use Boar Doctor. It seems to soak in a little bit more quickly, and it doesn't uh, leave any sort of residue that the almond oil can occasionally leave. To apply them, I bought a simple gun cleaning kit from Walmart. It came with a rod with a nice little plastic end here. There we go, so we can actually see it. So I can thread the swabs through here. And then, uh, yeah, just some nice soft cotton swabs it came with. You want to make sure they're very soft. I'm not trying to scratch or damage the wood in any way. Uh, the kit came with several hundred. I've since uh, been supplied others by uh, students and friends, so I'm not even sure where these came from. But just a soft, thin cotton swab is what you want. Don't use an existing gun cleaning kit. If you own firearms and have a gun cleaning kit, there are chemicals and various other things all over these if you've used them in a firearm that you're not going to want to introduce into any of your pipes here. So buy a good, clean, fresh kit. They're not very expensive. Finally, for the outside of the wood, I have a great product here called Wood Beams. I'll have a link in the description below, maybe even a card over here. Uh, for where you can buy this. I know a lot of people use Renaissance wax on the outside of the pipes. I hear that works great. I haven't used it myself. The important th part is, especially on an unvarnished instrument like most modern bagpipes, you want to protect the outside of the wood. First, before you oil your pipes, I would like you to make sure they are dry. You don't want to be doing this directly after playing. I actually like to oil them after they've sat at least overnight, if not a full day. I want to make sure the bores are nice and dry uh, from any saliva, moisture, condensation, anything before I go to oil them. So start with a uh, dry, clean bagpipe. I have a whole video on how to clean your bagpipe. Make sure it's clean first before you go to oil them and make sure all the cleaning products have dried, that nothing is wet when you go to oil your pipes. All right, so let's go about actually oiling a set of pipes. I'm going to start with two of these small swabs. If it's a larger swab, you might just need one. And my little rod here, and I'm actually going to just fold it through, pull it through about a third, quarter third of the way, like that. Now I'm going to take the other swab here, push this down, and I'm going to actually thread it through as well. 
so that I have both on here. All right, so now we have this on here. We have the, we have the swabs on the rod. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Bore Doctor product here and the directions on it say about 10 drops on a swab like this. So I'm actually gonna just do exactly that. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, ah, ah. All right, so that's not a lot. I did not saturate this thing. It's not dripping oil off of it. There's gonna be plenty of oil here for perhaps even more than one section of the instrument. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the base bottom. Take the, the reed out. We don't wanna introduce any oil into the reed. And notice I have a, a cloth on the table. It'll help keep any oil from getting messy and on everything else. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to insert gently. And as I'm going in, I'm gonna actually start spinning it around. There we go. And I'm trying to make sure I'm introducing oil into all of the bore. Looks great, nice, even coverage. That's it, I'm done with that section. I'm gonna set it aside and move to the middle. Now I wanna point out real quick on the middle, notice I have my three sections right here and one of these things is not like the other. Talk about it in some of my other videos on hemping and uh, using polyester thread. But anyways, I think it's a good idea if you're rehemping your pipe to do something about your middle joint so that you know that when the pipe is disassembled, which one is which. I use a different color thread. Everything else is yellow. The bottom of this one's black. And I do the same thing for the reeds. I have black string for the middle. I have yellow string for the outside so they match. I know where they're going back into. I don't have to try to keep track of where everything is. The tops are easier. They're attached by cords. I don't undo the cords when I go through this process. So I'm gonna repeat the process in the middle. Again, kind of just put through kind of spin it around as I'm going in it and back through and nice lovely light sheen of oil in there there we go looking great and look through it before and again it doesn't look dry per se sometimes the bores will look very dry if they've never been oiled they might look super dry you might even feel the dryness as you're going through put it through all the way, pull it back through. Nice, lovely light sheen of oil. Notice I have not added any additional drops. I'm about to add a few more as I go to the other sections here. Go back to my Bore Doctor oil. And I'm only gonna add probably six drops this time. Now I'm using the same swabs for now. And I'm doing that because as you can see, it's still very white. There's just the tiniest little bit of, of brown from either blackwood dust or whatever oil might have come out. These are still quite clean. If you oil a section and it comes out sludgy or super dark, you don't want to be introducing that yuck to everything else. These swabs don't cost any much. I feel free to take them out, remove them, throw them out when you're done. The tops. These can be just a little trickier because you do want to get some oil in the bell. Now, if you have small fingers or a very large, you know, bush opening at the top, you might have get some oil on your finger and actually get it around. On this particular set, even with my relatively small pinky, I can't touch the inside. But I'll show you how we can use this swab right here to get it in there. So I'm going to start from the bottom again, kind of spin it around. And this time I'm actually going to kind of push it and rotate it around. There's not quite as much tension on this part because it's a larger opening and I really want the, the swab and the oil to be kind of pressed into the sides as I do this. And now it gets into the slightly smaller middle part. Okay, coming out the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way out the end, pull it back through. Now it's most of the way into the bell. I'm gonna push it back just a little bit and now kind of swirl it around. And it's puffed out inside the bell and it's doing a good job of coating all of that. Pull it back through. I take a little look. It looks great. Just a light, nice light coating of oil. 
Take a look at this one. Yeah, just the tiniest bit dry looking. Going back through, go all the way out, push it back, kind of back in and up and around. And it's looking good. These sections are a little larger and this part actually did look a little drier. I'm gonna put about four drops of oil on here now. So you can see a product like this is gonna last you a long time. I'm not using a ton of oil. And I'm gonna go ahead and redo this part because it was feeling a little drier. Spin it around as I go in, out and through, back in, and then get the bell back through. Now that looks perfect, that looks great. For this one, I can't, again, the rod's not quite long enough for my set to clean the, or not clean, to oil the bell. I'm gonna stick it in a little bit further than that. There we go. I'm trying to get it kind of caught, so most of it's staying in the bell, and then just around in circles. And on the base here, I can actually, yeah, I can feel it with my finger. I actually could have used just my finger and put some oil in, but I kind of wanted to test to make sure this was working. And it is, it's working great. There's just the right amount of oil on that. I'm gonna go ahead, put a couple more drops. And again, my swabs are still looking quite good. Gotta put about four more drops, two per swab here. And do the base one more time, because the coverage inside is not quite even. All the way through. Go ahead and go on this side. Get that bell again. Spin it. Great. That looks awesome. All right. So there's all the the tops. Tops, drone bottoms. Those are all done. Those are all great. So moving on to the stocks. Now, I'm going to start with the drone stocks and the same cloth for now. Now, a lot of times the drone stocks are finished a little bit more roughly than the actual bores of the rest of the instrument. You might find it soaks up a little bit more oil or it can actually tear your swabs apart a little bit. Uh, my Robbies here have nice, very, very smooth stocks, so I'm not worried about that, but other sets I've played over the years have had rougher stocks and it's not a big deal. Um, just be aware you might need a little bit more oil. I put two more drops on as I go to the middle. If you have any sort of valve, in your bagpipe, now would be a good time to take it off. You don't want to be getting oil down on any of the, the parts of your valve assembly or anything else. So, okay, those three are oiled. Now, when you go for the rest, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same two on my channer stock. You might want to use different ones, especially if you use seasoning. It might kind of gum it up if you have a hide bag. Okay, that's looking good. And then finally for the blowpipe, I do the blowpipe last and my blowpipe stock here is actually um, plastic on this set. So I'm not going to oil it. You, this is for sections of wood, not sections of plastic. If you do have a stock though, that is wood, I always do it last. This is where the most of the gross, nasty everything is that you're introducing through your air and everything else. I don't wanna do this stock first and then move to the rest of the bagpipe and contaminate the rest of it. How long should you let the oil sit in the pipes? Well, if you did it right, there shouldn't really be oil sitting in any of the pipes. If there's drips of oil in your bores, you added too much oil during the process. Uh, and then I let them rest overnight before I do anything else. So I'll, I'll rub all of the, the product, this wood beams off the outside or remove any Renaissance wax if that's what you're using or whatever pro other product uh, you have. And if you have a preferred product, go ahead and list it below in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear how other people are taking care of their bagpipes. I let them rest overnight. And if there is still any standing oil that I can see in the bore of any of these, I'm going to go back through with my gun cleaning kit, my fresh gun cleaning kit, and take a couple of dry swabs. I'm going to put them straight through, kind of that bow tie look like I did last time, but no oil on them. And I'm going to do my best to remove all the excessive oil that might be left in them. And you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process until you know there's no oil left standing in them. You don't want the oil just to be in there for days on end. And you don't want it draining into your drone rates. That'd be messy and terrible, don't do that. Now some people use brushes to oil their pipes and that's fine. Uh, I would have a dedicated set of brushes if I were to do that. 
Uh, I wouldn't recommend necessarily using the Bore Doctor products as the brushes absorb a lot of the oil and this stuff's pretty pricey. Um, I would use uh, the almond oil if I was using brushes. Just understand you're going to go through a lot of it and you're probably going to add a little bit more oil to the bores than I tend to do or that I feel comfortable with. Just know that, that brushes are an option, but they're more expensive than a gun cleaning kit. That gun cleaning kit was $8 or $10. It wasn't very much and it came with enough of these swabs. to They lasted me years before I had to get more. So I do really recommend that, but you can use brushes if you want to use brushes. Now, how to care for the outside of your pipes if you have an older set that's varnished or a newer set that's varnished. Well, the varnish alone does a lot to protect the, the pipes. That's why it's on there. I kind of actually miss pipes being varnished. But all I would do if I, was, if I had a set of varnished pipes is take, a again, a, a cloth, probably very similar to this one, and get it ever so slightly damp, in no way saturated. If there's standing, you know, wring it out so it's just, just the slightest bit damp not completely dry. And then I would just kind of to just gently wipe down the varnish with the ever very slightly damp towel. You don't want to be soaking these things. When you're done wiping it off, you shouldn't see standing water on the outside. We're just trying to make sure that the varnish stays nice and clean and you're getting any grubbies off. And the microfiber can do a really good job of getting into the combing and beading and taking out any sort of dirt and yuck that might be in there. But that's really it for a varnish set of pipes on the outside. Just keep it clean. Don't get it overly wet. I don't apply any of these products to a varnish set of pipes. The varnish holds up well on its own, and I don't want to introduce anything that could possibly compromise uh, the varnish. Why do you want to oil your pipes? Well, when this was a living plant, there was oil through the whole thing. And after it's aged, dried, turned, that oil no longer is in here. And all of the pores in the instrument are now just kind of open and water vapor and water itself can get inside those pores. And you can do this experiment if you want, but I think you'll understand if you put a drop of oil on a plate and a drop of water on a plate, which of the two is going to evaporate more quickly? the water is going to evaporate far more quickly than the oil is. And every time the water goes into the wood, it's going to make the wood slightly expand and then it's going to make it contract when it evaporates and leaves. And so every time these get wet and then dry and then wet and you're playing, it's a mouth blown instrument. This thing's getting wet all the time. You're slowly compromising the instrument over time. Now, black wood is an incredibly dense wood. There's not much getting in. And there are tons of bagpipes and bagpipers out there that do not oil their pipes, have never oiled their pipes, have no cracks and no issues, and that's great. I came from uh, clarinet playing. That was actually my first uh, instrument I learned. And from the very beginning, oiling a wooden clarinet was part of the process. And they went over how to properly oil your clarinet. So having a wooden instrument, it's always been in my mind that you just have to keep it oiled if you're going to keep it Nice. When you oil your pipes, you're starting to refill the pores of this instrument with the oil, with an oil similar to the oil that was originally in here. And that oil is not nearly as quick to evaporate as water and can keep water from getting into the instrument, which can make it more dimensionally stable. Um, I've traveled to lots of different climates um, in my uh, touring days and my oiled pipes would not shift and move nearly as much as an unoiled set of pipes would. Uh, when I was playing uh, in a pipe band back in the day and we were traveling, my oiled pipes tended to be more stable than other people in the band's uh, unoiled pipes when it came to climate change. And going from hot to cold or low to high or whatever it might be. So I feel that the oiling of the pipes makes them more dimensionally stable over a wider range of environments. And the less everything is moving, the less likely you are to cause harm to your pipes. And this is an absolutely brilliant instrument here that I'm, I'm cleaning. And I want it to last not just the rest of my days, I want it to last the rest of several other generations days. And I think a well cared for instrument has the possibility to do that. 
So what if you have an older set of pipes and you are considering oiling them, but you've either never oiled them or you don't know any of their history if they've ever been oiled before, how should you go about doing that? Well, first, what kind of climate do you live in? If you live in a fairly moist climate, you're by a sea or an ocean, the relative humidity is uh, above 45% most of the year, you'd probably do okay to just start introducing oil slowly to the bagpipe to begin with, taking uh, the swabs, doing what I just did, but maybe just starting with two or three drops total, but just slowly start introducing the oil through the whole instrument. If you're in a dry environment, I would first try to find some place where you can get a humidifier, um, one that you can control the humidity on, and try to slowly build up the humidity um, before I start introducing oil. Um, if you live someplace where it's 10-15% humidity all the time, and you go and immediately add oil to a dry set of pipes, I, I feel they likely could crack. So if you've not had any problems, you have an older set of pipes, you might do well to just not oil them. If you do want to oil them, I would first slowly, maybe in a closet or something, get the humidity up, like have them spend a couple of days in around 20, 25% humidity, then up it a little bit more, have them spend another week or two in an environment where it's more like 30, 35, up at five to 10% humidity over a couple of weeks until you get it to around 45, 50% humidity. And you could take them out and play them. I'm not saying don't like play your instrument, but when you're going to store it somewhere, store it someplace that's a little bit more moist and that's gonna start getting the wood a little better uh, acclimated to the moisture. Um, once you have them in a, a more stable environment, because this wood does not wanna be kept in 10% humidity. Once you have it in a more stable environment, again, I would probably start with a few drops on the, on the swabs through all the pieces. How often would I do that with an older set of pipes? I'd probably wait four weeks between oiling the first time and then maybe three weeks the second time and then maybe two weeks the third time and then i'd probably keep up on an every two week schedule until the bores start not soaking in the oil you're going to get to a point where the wood's going to get more stable and the oil is not just going to into all of the pores immediately when you get there then I think you have to just kind of judge your environment. The drier the environment, the more often you're gonna to have to oil. I live in Dallas. I find that I oil my pipes about three times a year, um, maybe four times a year if we have a particularly dry spell during the summer. Now, that being said, I keep my office at a 45 to 50% humidity and between 68 and 72 degrees. I kind of, this is like a big instrument humidor. So I keep my instruments in a fairly moist, environment. Not that Dallas uh, is terribly dry, though winters can get a little dry, especially with heaters. If you live in a drier environment, um, you might want to consider an uh, in-case humidifier to keep your pipes um, from having to just stay out in super dry air all the time. I don't recommend storing your bagpipes like on an external stand or someplace like that, unless you can control the environment of where the pipes are going to be like I have. Um, but if you're just going to have your pipes in the middle of your, you know, bedroom, living room on a wall and the humidity is going to fluctuate from 15 to 50 percent on a given day, that's a lot for an instrument to go through. Just keeping it in its case, even just a standard pipe case, is going to keep the humidity much more level. All right, the one, the one part of the instrument I did not address, the pipe channer. Now, this is a Shepherd Blackwood channer right here. And I absolutely love this thing, and I don't oil it. One of these days I might experiment and actually start oiling it. If this channel starts sounding dull at any point, because it's about 10, 12 years old now, it still plays brilliantly. Uh, occasionally Blackwood channers can start sounding a little dull as they age. I don't know if it's movement in the throat or what, but they can. Not all. Many stayed brilliant their whole life. Uh, hopefully this one will too. But if it starts sounding a little dull, I might actually try to oil the inside. But uh, maybe it's a uh, old wives tale or some sort of superstition. But I've heard too many times to not oil the channer. And it's not that I'm worried about like introducing cracks or damage to that. I'm worried about shifting any of the dimensions in the throat through the oil. Now, my brain tells me that a properly oiled channer should remain more dimensionally stable than an unoiled channer. But I'm not willing to experiment on an instrument that plays as well as this one does. 
Um, so when I either get my hands on a kind of a not great sounding Blackwood Channer or more like this, if this one starts not working, I'm going to go ahead and oil it and uh, you can stay tuned whenever that happens and I'll let you know. But for now, I don't oil this. I don't do anything really to the outside either. Um, I just kind of keep it clean and uh, don't worry about it. Um, and always make sure that you remove it from the stock right from the bulb and not from the bottom. We don't want any more broken Blackwood Channers. Well, I think that about wraps us up here. Um, that's how I oil. I use uh, Boar Doctor products. Sweet almond oil also works well. Um, a clean gun cleaning kit, never used before. Um, some nice soft cotton swabs. And you can see the whole thing, it didn't take very long. This shouldn't take you two hours. This should take you 20 minutes, maybe a half hour the first time you do it. After that, it'll probably take more like 15. I was talking this whole time and I still got it done pretty quickly. So. I've been doing this again for over 20 years with all of the various bagpipes I've owned and I have not had a problem with any cracking or damage to any of the wood on any of my sets of pipes. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and informative and I hope you can go out and feel confident about getting your bagpipes oiled and maintained so that they can last you your whole life and maybe even some uh, lifetimes after that. So again, my name is Matt Willis. If you enjoyed this, please consider uh, subscribing to the page, liking this video, uh, heading over maybe to my Patreon and checking that out. Uh, I love making these videos for you guys and hope to keep doing it for uh, some time. So again, everybody, peace out. Cheers. Cheers.